there you are, Betty. Oh, hello, Mrs. Norton. What on earth are you doing in this dark room by yourself? I, I... Mrs. Morton, may I speak with you a moment? Of course, dear. But why aren't you with the others in the laboratory? That place frightens me. Oh, it's not that bad. Although I admit it's a bit gloomy. And that horrible mechanical man. I can't stand to look at it any longer. You're overwrought, Betty, dear. There's nothing horrible about a mechanical man. Frank has been working on it for two years now. And Jim has been helping us for a year. I know, Mrs. Norton. And I don't approve of Sam's going any further with his parents. But why, dear? Well, I know it's silly with you to hear this story. Not everything looks so weird. Haven't you ever thought that something was going to happen to you? Something you know is going to be terrible? Yet you can't explain what that something is. Now, my family's still around. I don't know. But somehow I have a feeling I'll never marry you. I don't like you. Well, time I've known you. Is this the way Jake said this tomorrow? Yes, sir. Hey, Mrs. Morton, you don't suppose anything will happen to Jane, do you? I mean, could anything possibly go wrong with the experiment tonight? Of course not, dear. I don't know. I just can't stand to have a mechanical man look. I have a feeling of having to go out. That's absurd. It's just a girl that knows the food. I can swear I've seen it look at me with evil in the sky. Almost as if it was scary. That's a good thing to find the last one. Well, I'll go back to the place you're going to be. Yes, thank you. What's the matter, child? You're trembling. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll be all right. I'll let you know where. You go on back, and I'll be back soon. I'm sorry, Mrs. Clark. I'll be my brother. Good boy. That's it. Sorry, Diana. Oh, Jim, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? There we are. Mm-hmm. Now, that should be just about it. I hope so, son. Uncle Frank, are you going to make him walk? Yes, in a few moments, Janet. Oh, I'm so excited. Good. Will he be able to talk to Uncle Frank? Of course not, silly Uncle Frank. Told you that 20 times yesterday. No, Mary's right, Janet. You see, this is just a mechanical man. He won't be able to talk. That's about the only thing he won't be able to do, though, Janet. You're right, John. The doctor's mechanical man will be able to do about everything a human being can do, except talk. How do you feel now that your work is about completed, Frank? Wonderful, Jane. And I want to thank all of you for standing by me. You've all been a great help. And without you, <laughs> I don't know what I'd have done. Well, it isn't every day that one has a distinguished brother who invents a mechanical man. And I certainly appreciate the opportunity you've given me, Dr. Morton, by allowing me to assist you in the experiment. That goes for me too, Dr. Morton. Well, I've learned more in the past month than any of my college classes taught me. You're all very kind, but our work isn't finished yet. We still have a few more things to do, and then we'll all know whether our time has been wasted or not. I'm afraid Betty doesn't share our enthusiasm for the mechanical man, Doctor. Yeah, and she was crying when she left. How do you know? I saw her and she had a handkerchief up to her eyes. Crying? No, what on earth for? The girls are right, Dr. Morton. My sister seems to feel there's something wrong in what we're doing. But that's foolish. There's nothing to be afraid of. I know, Dr. Morton, but Betty is a very sensitive girl. She feels that we're exceeding our limits. I'm sure she'll feel differently when she sees the results. Perhaps I'd better go to her. No, James. I know my sister pretty well. It'd be better to leave her alone for the time being. When I can turn out, Pop? Patience, son. Patience. Now, so hand me that iron, John. This one? Right. Mm-hmm. Won't be long now. When do you think you can try it out, Frank? Uh, just as soon as Mrs. Morton returns. Uh, by the way, James, where's Betty? She went upstairs a few minutes ago, Dr. Morton. Said she had a headache. Gosh, she's going to miss all the excitement. Well, when we're ready, you can go get her, Barry. You bet I will, Pop. Oh, hi, Mom. Hello, Barry. Have you seen Betty, Mrs. Morton? Yes, I just left her. She said she'd be up in a minute. 
They were just telling us Betty disapproves of our experiment. Oh, I think the storm has her on edge. She was much calmer when I left. Is there anything I can do? No, James. It's just a case of nerves, I think. Anyhow, let's give her a few more minutes alone. Well, if you think we should. We're just about finished, Madge. Well, it'd be wonderful to see a mechanical man move around, Mary. I suppose you'll let him help you do the dishes. I think your uncle would like that better than I would, Janet. Sometimes think that's why you invented a mechanical man. Oh, now, Madge. Well, you do hate doing little odd jobs, Frank. Well, if Frank's experiment is successful here tonight, none of us will have to worry about any odd jobs again. <laughs> I can't say that I'd mind having a mechanical man in my business.